Hello everyone. In this video I want to explain how I did my last video, um, the multi-exit portals, and explain how it could potentially be used. Yep. So what you probably already know is that the overworld is eight times bigger than the nether. So here we have an eight by eight by one um, area in the overworld. So this uh, re represent portal blocks and it will uh, basically send you to the same spot in another because that's yeah it's eight times bigger um, the second thing um, you need to know is that when an entity goes through a portal so let's say you're in survival then you can go through this point which is takes this block or you can go through here which takes that block so it doesn't care about the position of the portal and not even the position of the portal blocks it cares about the position of the player or the entity while it is in a portal block and of course it can be on different blocks while it is in the same portal block okay so that uh, is what you need to know at first um, and then what you might also know is that when an entity goes through a portal it lags quite a lot as you can see, when I chuck an item through, it will um, take one or two seconds before it actually goes through. So, as you can see, it took a little while before it actually went through. And it's not because it takes a well, while, um, like it does in survival, but just because it um, checks for portal blocks in the nether by loading a lot of chunks. And that's just laggy. But if I now throw another item through, like so, actually that just did the same thing but chucking multiple items through they instantly get teleported to the nether so that's uh, what I used in my video because the way they get teleported to the nether is by using a hash map which basically gets reset every 36 seconds so what happens is if you send through an entity and within 36 seconds um, an entity goes through at the same coordinates inside this 8 by 8 by 1 grid uh, actually not by 1 um, but we'll come to that later um, so this 8 by 8 grid then it will send it exactly to the same coordinates it doesn't even check if there's a portal block it doesn't check anything so it just sends it through and without any lag basically it just needs to load one chunk and doesn't check for portal blocks Okay, and so the second thing is that it doesn't check for Y value. I think that might be a leftover from how portals used to work. So what happens is that if you would have a way higher, it still goes in through instantly. Even if you buy, uh, build it up to high limit, it will still go through instantly through the lower portal. So that's exactly what I used to... Um, build my multi exit portals so as you can see here I opened it up and there's a portal there another portal there they're uh, not activated right now and this is the selector panel which really wasn't meant to be the, the main secret um, so this does absolutely nothing at all uh, yeah so it was a stair block like Myron noticed and how I detect the button on top of the redstone block is using a piston, which I think a Goose has a channel uh, first came up with. So you'll see that when I press this button, it will activate. And well, actually, it's not really easy to see, but it sent it had sent an item through. Now when I go through, I will land inside the redstone room. The TNT room and the quartz room are right above it. And this is actually what we sent through earlier. Um, and as you can see, this uh, actually this quartz block is what was sent through. And because they're uh, still relatively close, um, I still get sent through this portal actually. The bottom portal would have been closer, but um, that's why I deactivated using water. And then, well, of course, for now, this you cannot activate it again, but that's just a matter of 
yeah, using this stupid bot. Uh, if you use it, uh, a proper button and actually use other type of redstone, then you can obviously easily use it again. Um, the way this worked was just because if there's uh, a th if the 36 seconds um, um, are gone, then it doesn't matter if you press it, but you also by default go through the quartz room. And then finally the one with the TNT, which just uses a piston as well. And actually it went really fast now and you'll see that it probably didn't work. Yeah, so it went to the quartz room again. That's because I actually went through myself and then pressed the button quickly afterwards. So I also had to be careful of that. I had to uh, wait a bit for uh, before pressing the button basically. I had to wait uh, 36 seconds. So let's just wait a little bit and then I think it should work again. And then afterwards I'll talk to you what I uh, made and how I tried to use it. So now you can see it takes quite a while before the portal gets destroyed. That's just because it lags a bit. And as you can see, it works. So I got into the TNT room now. Okay. Um, yeah, so the important thing to know is that if you go through the same um, uh, X and Z value in an eight by eight uh, area, it does not check the Y value when uh, using the hash map. So an item has gone through a different Y value, but since you are um, in the same X and Z coordinates, you still go to, go to the same spot that um, item went through. Okay, so what I tried to use it for was a wither skeleton farm. Um, Mango came up with uh, this possibility. Um, it's it's probably done. Uh, it's it's definitely done before similar farms, but um, Mango came up. Uh, Mango came thought about using it for a wither skeleton farm, and then we noticed that it uh, lagged too much. And then I looked into it a bit, and I noticed that we could use that hash map maybe. So what I thought of doing was uh, I made three versions. But, uh, one injection, two injections, and three injections. Basically, if, as you can see here, it pushes over the mobs, then it pushes all the mobs again into a one by one um, portal block. And since the Y value doesn't matter, and we want to definitely have the blazes through as fast as possible, we um, use multiple gas. Uh, yeah, one, uh, yeah, three gas basically. Uh, on different Y value. Um, although there are a few problems with this, because we do need to send them through exactly the same portal block, at least in the X and C value, because even though in the overworld you have an 8x8 eight eight, um, area that uh, mobs can go through, in the nether it's actually 1 8 by 1 8 of a block. So basically this single portal block um, has eight different um, hash map states as you could say. Now that's not necessarily a problem because if you send enough mobs through then all eight of these will be uh, loaded. Um, another problem is that blazes and wither skeletons actually will be saved on different locations in that hash map because as I said, it's one eighth by one eighth, so it definitely matters if you're standing here and going through the portal, or if you're standing here, here, and you're going through the portal. And since wither skeletons have a bigger hitbox, they actually go through the portal a little bit earlier than blazes do. There are definitely more problems with this farm, um, but some of them are easily fixed. But the main problem is simply that it takes too long for the mobs to be sent through the, the portal because it, it, they first have to tra be transported this way of course and then they have to be transported that way 
and then yeah I noticed that not all mobs get uh, transported so basically I just decided that this is not a viable farm design also it's just a pain to um, sort the mobs in the overworld because you need to um, chunk load the, uh, the chunks in the overworld which is um, not as easy to do in 1.9 as it is in 1.8 and yeah just many problems uh, with it and I think that we have a much better design already so yeah didn't uh, didn't seem logical for me to keep working on it but I thought it would be nice to to at least show you what uh, what the idea was so other people might find it useful or might actually find a use for it possibly Okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching.